All right. Um, so I'm, I'm Jacob, um, and I uh, probably met a lot of you before, and, and some of you are um, excited to meet today. I want to preface this talk by saying that you've been all fooled. And this is not my talk at all. I um, actually I inherited it from a colleague of mine who, who actually runs this program at Acquia, and he was unable to come, but it's actually an important topic and I think kind of interesting. And, we, and so he said, hey, Jacob, can you do this instead? So if it's bad, you can blame him, and if it's good, you can give me all the credit, okay? Um, and I, I will have a couple people coming in. I think Gabor could probably answer a lot of the questions, so let's make this a little collaborative. I'm gonna pass the mic around and, and figure it out. This is not working. What's going on here? Uh, that's odd. The arrow keys aren't working. It's, even that's not working. Oh, there we go. Okay. Now is he gonna advance 10 at once? All right. Um, so we, there's a lot of metaphors people use to explain open source, right, in Drupal. How many of you, um, how many of you are an open source developer? Okay. The rest of you, what are you doing here? Exactly. <laughs> uh, and how many of you are open source developers? How many of you go to parties? Wow. That's great. Well done. And, and, and then when you go to the party, are they, everyone else an open source developer? Generally not. And so when they ask you what you do, what do you say? Software for websites. Software for websites. Anyone else? What if, they're, what if they really like you and they want to get to know you and they're like, what do you mean software for websites? What does that mean exactly? Then what do you say? Yeah, brand websites. And they'd be like, well, what's interesting about your company or your field? Then, then what do you say? Nobody? Nobody tries to explain their work to anybody? You get paid for doing free stuff. That's a great answer. What else? How do you describe Drupal to somebody who doesn't know what it was? If someone says to you, if Drupal's open source, then how do you guys make money? What do you say? Make life very simple. Make life very simple? Okay. Have an answer that takes longer. <laughs> right. So I think we hit across an actual problem here, which it's very hard to describe <laughs> what you do. So a lot of times we use metaphors uh, for that. For instance, has anyone heard that uh, open source is free as in puppy? You know that one? What does free as in puppy mean? It was ripping off of um, free as in speech, not free as in beer. Yeah. So free as in puppy is, you know, Right. The puppy's free, but you still have to take care of the puppy. Right? And that's part of it. Uh, one of the metaphors we often use, has anyone heard of like a, a public road, like a rail system or something, right? We all. We all need the road, so we shouldn't all each own individual blocks of the road. We should just build a road for everyone to use, right? Public commons and all that. Um, but what is the most common metaphor you've heard to use explain Drupal before? Lego. Legos. Legos. I, I, know, I know that uh, Legos are super popular in the US, and I think they're, they're popular here now. I don't know if they were when everyone here was a kid. Who here played with Legos when they were a kid? Raise your hand, please, so I know. That's it. So who here knows what Legos are? Wow, okay, we'll have to explain what Legos are. Are you guys really, you really don't know what Legos are? You've never seen Lego? That's surprising, well, okay, let's back up. So Lego is a, um, it's a set of, it's a set of uh, like plastic bricks that you can snap together to make just about anything. So you can, it's got wheels and it's got little flags and there's all different colors and all different shapes and you can snap them together and they stay together really well. And you can build spaceships or cars or what have you, whatever you want to make. That's what Legos are. Um, and, and why do we say that, that Drupal is like, is like Legos? Um, well, one of the reasons is that it's got a lot of parts, right? Drupal's got tons and tons of parts. We call those parts modules or themes or the things where there's all these different parts you can assemble. You get this huge box of parts. Um, you know, it's not just one or two. You can't just pick red or blue or black. You can pick every color and every shape. And there's so many different ways to do things. There's a lot of parts. Um, if you use those parts in the wrong way, you can really hurt yourself very badly. That's another thing about Drupal, just similar to Legos. Um, but the, the most common reason why we say Drupal is like Lego would be what? You would know? I guess? What? Did you raise your hand or are you just stretching and I caught you? Sorry. Um, so what the, the main reason we say that Drupal is like Lego is that you can build all kinds of stuff with it. You can build you know, all different types of contra uh, contraptions and all different types of, of you know, 
cities and, and, and forts and cars and whatever with it. And similarly with Drupal, it's not limited to just one type of application and building it a certain way. It's not like Word. Word is what? Word is a word processor. It's always going to be a word processor. It'll never be a spreadsheet program. It'll never be a, a Wikipedia you know, thing, whatever. And then Drupal you can make all kinds of things with, and that is fantastic. And there's a million ways to do it. There's a million ways to build it. You can snap all those pieces together and create anything you want. Um, and flexibility is awesome. Okay? What is it? Awesome. Awesome. Okay. And if you agree with that statement, raise your hand, please. Okay. And if you are a programmer, raise your hand. It's the same hands. Okay. This is you. Um, the programmer represents, this is the IT buyer in an organization. Someone who, who has to be, is responsible for making sure that we can build things efficiently and fast and keep them running and secure for a large enterprise, or any enterprise. Um, and, and they love flexibility. That's really key to their, to their job. That makes sense. Uh, ask another question. How many of you can drive a car? Okay. Uh, how many of you can fix a car? Even like oil changes, spark plugs? One or two, yeah. Cool, because my car's outside, I need to change the oil. <laughs> um, okay, and, and how many of you would prefer to buy your car or build your car? How many of you can build a car? Yeah, I don't think anyone in this room can, can build a car. Um, so, <clears throat> When you look at that, you think, building a car, no. That sounds cool, but I got other things to do with my time. I need to get to office. My job is not to build cars. My job is to get to office. That's the business buyer in an organization. That's the marketing head or the sales head or whatever who's responsible for getting results out of the software that's being built. And this person, uh, they, don't, they may appreciate technology. They may even be very technical themselves. But their job is to put the right content in front of the right people at the right time so they do something the organization wants. You buy something, sign up for something, tell someone about something, whatever it is. That's their job. And, and, and building software is a nightmare for them. It's a huge distraction. Your job is to get to office. Your job is to go on a date. Your job is to get to grandma's house on the weekend. Building a car would be a huge distraction for you. And this brings up what we call the build versus buy sort of argument and the build versus buy problem. <clears throat> One side we have it's flexible and the other side is it's easy. And we can't just solve one problem. It's not enough to say that one of these guys is wrong. They're both required for the organization, and they both have their needs which are relevant. Um, so how can we figure out a system wherein there's something out of the box uh, that will, will solve the goals of the, the business user, that has his domain in mind, that understands his problems and knows how to solve them, uh, at the same time being flexible enough that you can enhance it, that you can build upon it, that you can create other things with it. That's a flexible system. Uh, anyone have any ideas? How do we do that currently? No answers? Distributions, yes. Okay. Um, so how many of you know what a distribution is? Okay, how many of you have used one? And how many of you use one on like every project you do? Yeah, <laughs> that went from like, 50 to 20 to two. <laughs> so distributions have been moderately successful at solving this gap, but not always getting there. Um, a distribution, for those who are not aware, um, is we take, you know, you have core, Drupal core, and you have a site. Uh, in between that, you have a, a, a distribution layer. So distribution is core plus a bunch of modules you'd use all the time and some configuration to stitch them together. And on top of that, you build a site. That's how it's typically worked. Um, and now, you know, and then you can translate that into multi-sites if you have to produce multiple sites. A lot of big enterprises don't produce one site. They have a distribution, which may be like a, um, if you're an insurance company, it might be a distribution called the insurance representative distribution. And every insurance rep gets a separate site, but it's all based on the same distribution, you know, or so what have you. Um, and so Lightning uh, falls in there. Lightning is a distribution uh, for Drupal. Uh, it's a set of, of pre-built modules uh, that are configured to work well together uh, that you can build on top of. One of the key design differences, though, that we thought about with Lightning is we said, we want to make the best uh, content authoring experience 
uh, in the industry, not just Drupal, right? And we know that we don't know what best is. We at Acquia are not gonna figure out what best is, if there even is a best, because every organization works differently. Uh, we are not a marketing organization. We are much more the geeky IT guy with the, the, C, C, the C colon prompt coffee mug, uh, and we probably would not do a great job of it. Um, so we looked to do was to say, hey, there's gonna be this base, and then there's gonna be enterprise customizations on top of that that we can expect are going to come, and on top of that, we're gonna build sites. So we're trying to build a distribution distribution, as it were, um, and provide a lot of really clean, really well-built components that sit underneath the enterprise customizations. Everyone with me so far? Yeah, okay. Uh, a little more specifically and less theoretically, uh, you know, what, what problems are we trying to solve in Lightning? <clears throat> Uh, I think these are problems which have plagued Drupal for a long time, and we're sort of trying to tackle the most difficult ones. Uh, we're gonna follow layouts. So layout is something where both the, the block system was traditionally very uh, inflexible. Panel system is incredibly complex and heavy, and trying to be somewhere in the middle where a marketer can just say, okay, I need bop, 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 my page, done, put it up to market. No, that's something which has been hard to achieve in Drupal to date. Uh, workflow. Pretty good in Drupal to date, to be honest. Uh, some of the things that aren't there, though, is if you want to preview multiple pieces of content to publish at the same time, uh, that's been a challenge traditionally. Maintaining multiple revision trees of content can be a problem at times, so that's one we're focusing on. Uh, again, the preview thing I just mentioned, seeing how the site will look, assuming that we publish four or five things at once, configuration changes as well. Uh, media handling, that's kind of a, a, a difficult scene in Drupal, of which I'm partially responsible for. Um, but anyway, that's a separate thing around embedding content, embedding rich media from other sources. Um, you know, and then of course, at the other bottom layer below that, we're also looking at things that are really important to enterprises and having those pre-built in, making sure that we have automated testing, that we have good security layers, et cetera. Um, and without further ado, I've given you the reasons behind Lightning. We can do a quick Q&A now, and then I have a demo uh, video that was produced by the head of the Lightning team, who is not here. Those of you who came late, this is not my talk, I'm sitting in for somebody. <laughs> uh, I mean, I made the talk, but it's his, it's his program. Um, so we're gonna show the demo video, but any questions before we do that? Take a break? No? Okay, is everyone ready to fall asleep? A little after lunch, watch a movie, sit back in your chair. Should I turn on the lights? Um, all right, let's see a video and we'll talk a little bit, it shows a little bit of the features. This is still very much a work in progress. It's still a beta sort of product at this point. Um, we're making a demo of a, a site which is trying to sell drones. Um, and we're making a, we're gonna create, uh, first we're gonna create some content, we're gonna create a, an article, a blog post on this site about a, a different kind of drone. Um, and you know, for that we're gonna need a little bit of content. So I apologize that this is all about bacon and I understand that, Drup that India is 20% Muslim population, but uh, this is made in America, it wasn't my doing. Um, so we're going to use this thing which is full of bacon words, like Laura Ipsa. Uh, and it's going to be pasted in here. Um, we're going to show a little bit of the media handling, so how we add rich content. This is Drupal 8, yes. Lightning is Drupal 8, yep. Sorry about that. So we go to a YouTube video. Um, and this is not a cooking show. This is exactly how fast, how, lo how long it takes to do things. <laughs> um, and we're copying the YouTube URL. Uh, and then we go to the media library. We can pick existing media or we can paste it in the embed code from YouTube. And we can say save it to our library to use it later. And that will embed it right in the middle of the post. Um, and now we're going to, again, create an embed. Uh, we're gonna put an image here. Uh, this one we're gonna upload from our, from our uh, hard drive. You just drag and drop it in there. And again, we wanna save that so we might wanna use it later. Um, and then finally, uh, we're gonna want to add some social media to the post. Um, so we'll see that. Over here we're going to Twitter, and we're gonna find a tweet that we wanna add from New York Times. And so we copy the tweet URL. And putting it back here, again for the embed, just paste it in, and he gives us that nice embed. And this is built for a lot of services and it's a pluggable system so other social networks can follow suit. Um, what's that? Yeah, I think it is own bed behind it, I'm pretty sure. But again, 
Q&A is probably not, I don't have all the details. I'm not, it's not my thing. But I have actually, one of the guys who's in India who works on this team is actually going to come here in a few minutes and he'll be able to give you a lot more information. Cool. And so that was creating a piece of content. This is creating a landing page. Um, so landing page being a more complex page around a specific topic with its own layout and its own sort of different blocks of content and uh, goal. Um, so here we're going to be adding some blocks. Um, in this case, we're using just standard sort of Drupal blocks that were built the same way with embeds. Um, and uh, we're going to be adding another block when he gets around to it. Um, the video block, uh, again, just built using a, a standard Drupal block with a video embed, just like we did it earlier. We put that in our different regions, so the different regions uh, for the layout of the page. Um, and then here we can see how we can, I don't know if he's changing the layout or, right. We're going to add also um, a Instagram block. So this one, is uh, one second comes to it uh, right and so this is a right a layout picker you can pick different layouts and change layouts on the fly uh, and all the content will reposition and then you're also able to then uh, resize it. it'll be responsive here we're going to add a, uh, a list of a list of tweets uh, from Twitter this is a live thing coming from views this pulls straight from uh, tweet entities using the view system and the entity system um, so we can we can pick those and say we want five tweets to show. And uh, I'll load in a second. Find another call to action. Da da da. There we go. And the site's now the page is done. Um, or maybe it's not done. <laughs> Sorry. All oh, right. And so that's pretty much all it takes to, to create a landing page that looks like this. And this is stock lightning out of the box right now. Um, and yeah, the whole thing is responsive, all the layouts, which is pretty much more of a Drupal 8 thing, but it also is you know, part of lightning as well. So. Pretty cool. So we're getting, we're getting there. I think it's looking not so bad, right? I think it's closer than I thought when I saw the demo. Um, we're going to look at workflow a bit and how we handle revisioning and uh, moderation. So this is back to our original post here. We're going to edit the draft um, and make a quick change here. Put a tweet in. And you know, that came from the media library. So we had that tweet in our media library, which I think is kind of cool. It's a sort of newish feature. Um, now we're saving it as needs review, uh, which means it's a workflow state. None of this is particularly revolutionary. This is really the same kind of stuff you saw in Drupal 7 for the most part, but it's now working in Drupal 8, thanks to the, the Lightning team. Um, and now we're in editor review. And again, an editor can come in here, see a dashboard of everything that needs to be approved. The editor can, can go in and approve it or send it back and give comments on the workflow state. Um, so. But then after it's published, you know, Assuming if there's anything that's that's wrong with it, you know, the revision history is is maintained and, and anyone can, can revert back to an earlier version. Again, none of this is particularly revolutionary, um, but you know, in Drupal 8 things are still a work in progress. So some of the stuff it didn't exist a month ago or whatever, two months ago, which is now now working. Uh, thanks to the efforts of the contrib efforts here. Um, but a, a sort of more interesting one is is probably is probably scheduled updates. So here we're we're doing this and we're saying that we're going to want to release this content only on a given date, which obviously now is in the past, but not when this video was made. Um, so we're saying that when the time comes to this, we want to change the state to published. And so that goes into the system and, and that, that also works now. And uh, that's pretty much it. I mean, that's the demo we have right now. Um, so any questions about that or no? Good. Um, what's that? How many contrib modules? Oh, I don't know the exact count of contrib modules. I think um, I think they say the team has upgraded like 
20 or something to date. It's around there right now. I'll get to the team in a minute and like who all is involved in this and how it's happening. Um, this, is, this is a contrib effort primarily. Like the team that Gabor is on is the Octo team. Um, and they're all full time working on Drupal core. So there's like five or six of them and they only work on Drupal core um, and solving some of the biggest problems there. This, this team is specifically focused not just on contrib, but on solution space. So designing, but upgrading all the contrib modules and then making them secure, making them testable and making them pretty and work well and, and work well for customers. Um, so one of the, one of the reasons that, um, well, let me ask you this. When we went from fifth, we went from 20 people who had used a distribution to two who used them on every project, what is the delta there? Why is that not happening? Why do people not use distributions on every project? Become bulkier. Okay, anyone else? Usually too rigid. Too rigid, rigid, yeah. So too rigid, meaning they have one way of doing things. It's hard to do it any other way. They're not like Legos, it's more like an action figure that you buy at the store. You have to chop up his head to get anything else on it. Anyone else? I think those are, the, those are sort of the same sort of things, yeah? Right, because you're undoing, you're trying to undo so many things. You have, you have code that, that's maybe conflicting with your code that you, don't even, you didn't write and you can't really maintain very effectively and all that. It's, you're doing your own thing. So I think, yeah, past a certain point of complexity, distributions can be difficult. And so we tried to think about that differently in this case again. So we made a huge t focus on automated testing one. So we said we should upgrade the modules cleanly from seven to eight with roughly the same functionality as a first step and we should make sure they have great uh, testing behind them. We use behavioral driven development. So we use BHAT for that. And those tests are, are run on a regular basis. We make sure that each individual unit works really well by itself as a unit. So they're not heavily coupled Hayabishek with others. Um, you know, another, another one is our sort of philosophy around this should be a toolkit. It shouldn't be a specific experience. It shouldn't be that we're building a distribution meant for a particular uh, person, a particular use case exactly. It should be more of a toolkit. And so we're hoping that makes it, that keeps it lighter. Um, you know, in Drupal 8, we have auto loading, which also helps with code bloat. It's not as much of an issue, perhaps. Um, you know, and, uh, what was this one I had here? Um, and we're also trying to do this in such a way where we, um, we're working with the community more as opposed to trying to build a solution for customers. We're really focusing on just improving the contrib modules as they are in the ecosystem and letting other people build those customer-centric solutions on top of them. It's a big risk for Acquia, but I think you know, we'll see how it goes. Um, and uh, you know, I think it's, it's ready now. Like, you can use it. This is a bit of a beta. I don't, we don't have sites in production with Lightning yet, but you certainly could start building on it. Um, like I said, it's really just a very light layer on top of core and very commonly used contrib modules. So rather than tracking your own Drupal 8 and all those contrib modules that you need anyway, following the Lightning project is probably actually a really good move right now. I think it's, it's certainly going to be stable enough to do that. Again, it's all about testing. Um, and in fact, it's, it can be a good guideline as you get into Drupal 8. A lot of you probably are wondering, which modules can I trust? Which ones are ready? How do I get started? Um, we're trying to provide that guideline to the community so that you can just follow Lightning and say whatever's in Lightning in the stable channel is going to be stable to build on. Or if it's not stable right now, I'll be told it's not stable, and I know that it will eventually become stable. So you can start uh, using that for your projects. Um, and, and all of this was built uh, by a program we call the Drupal 8 Module Acceleration Program, or a D8 map. Um, we have 15, that's actually not quite accurate, I think it's like 12 something. Uh, full-time Acquia engineers who are dedicated to this, just doing this. So all they do is upgrade contributed modules and refine their usability and do testing on them. Three of whom are in India, one of whom is here, Abhishek Anand. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> um, and, uh, and so the, uh, sorry, and that, that's what we do within Acquia. And then at the larger team, we, we put together over half, half a million dollars in grants, uh, which we are paying community members to work on their projects. Um, so examples of that are like, um, who are the good examples of that? Larry Carfield, yeah, Workbench, Rules, Fago and Rules, um, you know, yeah? Uh, we have uh, people from the uh, multi-version module that's running more. Okay, the multi-version module. You guys are getting paid on top of your jobs to do that? Not bad. You guys are getting paid on top of your jobs to do that? 
I, I, <laughs> I, thought, I thought we had a rule that we were going to allow that. <laughs> so. And, and uh, sorry, Jacob. Um, but one thing they didn't demo here is the full site preview stuff. Yeah. Uh, we're actually going to, and this is a shameless plug, very sorry. But this session in this room, right after this session, we're going to talk about uh, the multi version module and a few other modules. We're not going to demonstrate them within Lightning, but Lightning is looking to use these modules in, in a later beta version for full site preview. Uh, so for those of you inter interested in that in regards to the workflow piece here, might be interested in joining the session after this. So if you guys, related to if you guys who don't know what like full site preview means, I think it's kind of a, maybe a new concept for some people. It means that like you saw the scheduling one where I said on such and such a date, I'm going to publish this article. Right? Imagine if you do that with 20 different articles. Yeah? Uh, how can you see what the whole site looks like on that date? Right? What does the change look like? You know, not just previewing one, but previewing the entire site. Or say, I show different content for users if they're from North India or South India, personalization. How do I see the whole site in one side or the other? Like that kind of thing. Is that right? Is that a good? Uh, yeah. Not quite. Well, how should I say it? How should, it's better uh, way to just plug uh, it. Okay. But uh, the full site, if you have 20 different articles um, with images and tags and everything, uh, the entity specific preview system becomes quite tedious. Yeah. Um, so we're using a set of modules to tackle that problem space. And we're going to go through some of them and some additional modules that are not related. But cool. In okay. the next session in this room. Let's check it out. Um, he's a really smart guy and he always has a good session. I'm, I'm sure it'll be good anyway. Uh, yeah, and so that's what we're that's what we're doing. I think it's a it's a really exciting project. I know for the team in India, it's a really exciting project to be a part of, um, and I think it's a um, it's scary maybe for Acquia. We're spending a lot of money on this on top of everything else with the Octo team, but um, but I we feel like it's necessary for us to to kickstart all these things and really get a, a first edition of all these modules out there and, and something we can build on. And a big part of that is your participation. So we really need you to test this out. We really need you to try it out in real world scenarios. Uh, we need you to get involved early and make sure that we do it the right way, um, that it becomes really a best practices toolkit for how to build sites in Drupal. Uh, and we need your feedback. We need it you know, now and, and later and, and as a continual basis. So please do check out Lightning. Uh, go for the download and, and try it out to build a little test project, see how it goes. Uh, feel free to write to me. Um, but even better, uh, you can get in touch with John Kennedy, who's the uh, <clears throat> the Lightning product owner. Uh, you can find him online, or you can on the product page for Lightning. Or like that. And with that, I think we'll just go into Q and A. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Um, and I think for Q and A, I think I wish I should come up here and answer the questions because I <laughs> got a lot. Good. Does anyone have any questions? No, I, I think. You, Repeat the question in the mic. Okay, sorry. So his, his, yeah. so his, his question is, you know, Drupal as a product, if you create a distribution, is essentially a product, and you have multiple instances of that product. So you work, you work for Stanford, I'm guessing? So how could I guess? And so at Stanford, they have a base distribution. They say that every, is it departments or? Uh, yeah, I don't think You're a high wire or something? I don't know, anyway. No, no. Okay. So anyway, so like you have one, one sort of uh, template for what every department looks like and you create different instances of that. And the problem is that each of those different departments can go crazy and make their own thing. And so how do you maintain some consistency while allowing flexibility, right? That's the question. I don't know. That's that question. You know the answer to that question? You've done, you've done this a lot, tried to do this a lot. I mean, I have some, I have some ideas, but I think yeah, this is um, a good job. That's not a... Come on, just come on up. This is sort of your problem space. So. Uh, 
we have we have a similar problem where 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 I work as well, and there's definitely not a very good answer to it, um, especially not in Drupal seven. That becomes very tedious with features and features overrides and things like this. Um, we we've put, I think, the place that where we work. We have we have um, hundreds and maybe uh, almost up to a thousand instances of the same distribution. So for us, at least, I'm not sure about your specific use case, but we've built a lot of automation and a lot of tools to discover where people have overridden, uh, overridden things. So we have uh, lots of process going out to each and every site, figuring out, okay, what are the things that are overridden? And then it just comes down to human communication to sort of solve these things. Uh, there isn't necessarily a good technical solution to this. In Drupal 8, I'm not sure. But discoverability and, and documentation and, and uh, introspectability, is that a word? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, becomes part of that, and then it's it's a conversation of what should be included in the base distribution, should not be move your override to different module. Can we? That's how we solve it. I'm not sure. So we build a lot of automation to discover when and where, and then be able to document around that. Why was this documented? You know, lock this or whatever it might be. I could I could also add. Um he works for, for Pfizer, so that's their thing. But I, you know, when I was I was on the Drupal Gardens team early days, and that was a kind of a similar problem, but at a different sort of level of complexity and scale, in that the sites are less complex than what you're dealing with, they're less customized, but there's a lot more of them. Um, so when you have 60, 70,000 sites to upgrade, and you're upgrading your base framework, and they're all run by different people. I mean, some of them was like somebody who walked dogs for a living. Somebody was a dentist somewhere. Somebody had a weird porn site they put up. You know, it's all different types of people from different walks of life. They can customize it however they want. They can't write code, but they can still do a lot of damage with configuration. How do you know that upgrade's not gonna break something? Uh, one of the tricks we did, which of course is something that only large enterprises could do, is we wrote a suite of uh, very basic tests for things like logging in, logging out, for creating a piece of content, creating a view and viewing the view or whatever, just very basic stuff. Uh, and we take about 50 or 60 reference sites who we knew to be fairly active users, and we took a random sample of about another 50, and we, we automated every build we'd release, we'd run all those tests against their sites. It wouldn't catch everything, but it certainly caught a lot more than we had expected. So they would we'd break very simple things sometimes. Um, and we'd cut screenshots and stuff. So we did some of that stuff. I mean, it, you know, didn't always work though. So <laughs> that's one answer. Uh, anyone else? Yeah. Um, uh, one more insight to, to the problem space there with Drupal 8. Um, uh, and I think the community is still experimenting a little bit with environment specific overrides and I think it touches the same problem space with site specific overrides and so on. There's a very, uh, there's a very useful functionality in uh, the CMI uh, system or the config uh, uh, system in Drupal 8 where you can do full import of config configuration but then after you can do partial import of configuration. Uh, so if you Google for Dave Hall, uh, he has written a blog post on environment specific CMI configuration where he suggests like a layered import of, you first do full import of, of the full configuration which also then deals with like configuration that needs to be deleted and things like that. Um, but then you can do partial import so you could structure your Git repository to say, you know, here's the base distribution and here's, you know, the partial imports that you need to be able to do on top of that. Uh, so Google for Dave Hall and environment specific configuration. Um, you'll find this blog there. Um, that's some of the things that we are experimenting with at the moment for, for managing that type of problem space in Drupal 8 as well. I was going to show this. Um, if anyone has any other questions, I was going to just... Uh, talk a little about the modules we've been working on. I was trying to get the list up. What's the password? Do you guys know what it is? <laughs> Got it. Thank you. Let's do it in a round. Asia, 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 2016. Okay. Um, so one, one is, uh, I mean, Abhishek, do you want to talk a little bit about the, what the modules you've been working on or the team has been working on? Like, yeah. just so currently in India, we are a team of three people. Myself, uh, there's another guy called Naveen, and uh, uh, Neetu, uh, I, I don't think I can't find those guys in the room. So we three have been working on. Uh, we started with a module called Auto Log, Auto Log Out, 
and uh, that has an RC2 version. What we generally do is we take the module from whichever state it is and, and take it to a release candidate. And after that, it is up to the maintainers to get into the stable version. So that's what we have been doing. We have ported auto log out, we have ported share this, and now we are working uh, on ultimate cron. At the same time, secure pages. Secure pages I is interesting because uh, I think Gabor would be able to uh, talk more about it. Uh, the functionality has been removed from the core, and, uh, we, and the, in the contributor modules, we are trying to replicate uh, the switch functionality, which switches from HTTP to HTTPS. So that is an interesting problem that we are trying to solve. And uh, if anyone is interested, uh, he's, he or she is most welcome to join us and help us with the work that we are doing. So that's pretty much it. So three people we have uh, in last two months, two and a half months, we have ported almost three and a half modules. <laughs> so, and there are a lot more to come. Uh, we have uh, Search API and Facet API are the couple of other modules which we are going to pick up in uh, next month in March. I think that's the time when we want to get those modules in stable release. And I think, uh, so for any of you, even, I mean, who aren't working at Acquia, I mean, it's still all of our Drupal. We all need to do this, right? Acquia can contribute a lot, but I mean, you can also do your own thing. And if you're looking to gain experience in terms of working uh, in the community and building reputation and building skills, this is a really good opportunity to do this. If you follow the Lightning Project and you find out the roadmap, start looking at those modules because you know they're going to get very active um, maintainership from some very serious maintainers who are actually paid to do it, which is amazing. And so if you get in that issue queue, you're going to get responses quickly. You're going to be able to, to get involved in projects in a way which will, I think will work really well for you. So consider that also as a way to jump in. Not all of the projects are like entity embed or feel like field collection, really complicated abstract stuff. Some of them are, are very simple as well. You know, so just a little plug there. All right, unless we have any other questions, I guess we'll close, yeah. Do you want to share the URL for the Lightning Project? I don't, I, I don't know what it is. No, I'm just kidding, drupal.org slash project slash Lightning. So, just like we all are. Um, also, uh, this is next month, right? Panels, panelizer, search API like facets. Features, like features, here's, the, here's the development team who's, who's working on it, the core development team. Um, yeah, that's that. All right, thanks everyone. Hope that was useful, and I'll see you around.